Hey YouTube, Gallagher123123 here with a series taking a look at iOS 16 with voiceover. Yes, it is that time once again. iOS 16 is here and in this first video, I'm going to do two things. One, kind of go over what devices are supported with this update, as well as give a brief summary of some of the highlights and kind of give you an overview of what will be covered in this series. So let's get into it. iOS 16. This was introduced, of course, at WWDC as it is every year back in June. And of course, it is now available for everyone to use. Now, iOS 16 will run on the iPhone 8 or newer. So this time around, if you're still on an iPhone 6S or an iPhone 7, I'm sorry, but you are out of luck. So I know that might be a bit disappointing for some, but really those devices have really gotten a good life with being up to date with iOS. But if you want to use iOS 16, you will unfortunately need a newer device. But that's still pretty good. The iPhone 8 came out in 2017. So a five-year-old, yeah, five-year-old phone is still up to date, pretty nice. So what is new in this update? Well, talk a little bit first about the mainstream stuff that Apple spent a bit of time talking about at the keynote back in June. In the next videos, we'll start to really get into this stuff and play with it, see how it all works. But for now, I'll just give a bit of a summary to kind of whet your appetite a bit for the rest of the series. So one of the biggest things to come out of iOS 16 is changes to the lock screen. The lock screen has been very consistent, you know, pretty much forever. It's, you know, gone through a few changes, but really nothing that major. Similar to the state of the home screen for quite a while until iOS 14 when widgets were added to the home screen. Well, now widgets are also making their way to the lock screen. It's a very cool feature and it's a way to really get access to information at a quick glance. And they work quite well with voiceover. There are some issues here and there, and I will definitely cover those when we take a look at that in another video of the series. But overall, it's a very nice way to get information. And the best way to think of it is if you're an Apple Watch user, the widgets on the lock screen are very much like Apple Watch complications. So that's a great way to think of it. And on a similar track, another change, this is a bit more visual, but we'll take a look at it as well and see how it all impacts voiceover, is that notifications now come up from the bottom of the screen instead of the top. And they're kind of stacked by default. And that is to allow you to see your lock screen, you know, what you've picked for wallpaper and your widgets. Now also related to notifications, yes, um, a lot of stuff with notifications and lock screen and all that fun stuff. Focus has gone through a few changes and we'll take a look at that, including focus filters, which is a method that you can use to get rid of content that you don't want to see. For example, if you're in your relaxing, you know, your personal focus, your home from work, you may not want to see your work email inbox when you're in the mail app or messages from your boss. Well, with focus filters, you can hide that content. You can also hide tab groups in Safari and some other things like that. So that's focus filters. And 
Another pretty big thing is communication. I would say that's another big theme of the iOS 16 update. You can now, in messages, edit a message after you've sent it. I think there is a time limit that you can edit a message and it shows up that it was edited and you can, I believe, see the original message as well. So even though you edit, a person can still see what was originally put there. You can also unsend a message. So if you send a message by mistake, you can unsend it, but you have a very short window to do that. I think it's like two minutes. And that's to make sure that, you know, you're not unsending a message that you sent like, you know, quite a while back. There are also some similar features for mail, including, again, unsending a message and a feature that I really am happy is finally built into iOS is a scheduled send option. So if you want to send an email at a certain time, maybe if you're someone like me, I tend to work on my emails quite late. <laughs> Like, I find myself sitting down to work on emails, sometimes at like one o'clock in the morning. And then I'm thinking to myself, I don't know how I feel about the recipient seeing me work on emails that late at night. <laughs> well, now with scheduled send, that's no longer an issue because I could tell iOS, send that email at 8 a.m., for example. And it'll go and do that. A very cool feature, indeed. There are also some changes to dictation. I think it's trying to be more accurate and more intelligent, including the option of it figuring out punctuation automatically. Now that you can turn off, and I'll show you how that all works in an upcoming video. So those are just a few of the really big features. I know there are some others that, you know, I'm not thinking of everything at the moment, but I think those are the ones that I'm most excited about and I'm looking forward to covering for you all. Now, what about accessibility? Well, the biggest thing for voiceover, and I'm excited to do a video on it. In fact, it will very likely be the next video out after this one. There are a ton of new voice options. You might remember iOS 10 back in 2016 when Apple gave us a whole range of vocalizer voices to pick from. Well, this is like iOS 10 all over again. There is a huge collection of vocalizer voices and we are now up to date. So voices like Zoe, Nathan, Evan, and all of those guys that have been out for a while are now finally available on the iPhone. And I'm not going to totally spoil it, but there is also a voice option that will make a lot of people happy. Actually, I was really excited to see it myself. So you'll have to wait for that video to see what it is. Another kind of feature that I lump in with like Siri and accessibility is Siri has had the option of speaking notifications if you're using something like AirPods. Well, you can now enable it to speak them over the phone speaker, and that is a setting in accessibility. So we'll take a look at that as well. And that could be good for certain apps. For example, I plan to set that up for carrot weather so that when I get my weather alerts, it will read them aloud automatically. So that is a bit of a sneak peek and summary of some of the new features in iOS 16. And in the next set of videos, we're gonna really get into it and I will show you how these features work. Now, again, iPhone, 8 and newer is what you'll need 
to take advantage of iOS 16. Now, for the demonstrations, I will be using, for the most part, my iPhone 12. And I am filming from the 10R, but I think that will ensure that we get the best compatibility for all the features, and I'll be able to give some good demonstrations of how the features work. So, that has been a little bit of information about iOS 16. I am very excited to be bringing this series to you all, and I think you're going to find that iOS 16 is a very exciting update. So, thank you for watching this iOS 16 video. Stay tuned for more, and I will see you in the next one. We hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe for more, and feel free to comment. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, at Gallagher123123. Thank you for watching, and we will see you soon.